We're here to solve this Yagellon cipher puzzle by Carl Wirth. Its uh, theme is lots of laughs. It's got LOL, it's got he, it's got ho, it even maybe has ha in the grid. So some creative arrangements of the letters. You'll actually see these arrangements of letters give some pretty uh, creative logical deductions as well through this video. One thing I'm seeing are some cases like this L pointing to the top with two cells. L has to be zero or one. This E pointing to the right with one cell is also zero or one. We even know for sure that like the loop is going to pass through the section, but we've got E and L as 0 and 1, and all the other letters will have to be higher. I think the first key breakdown of the puzzle, if we even just sort of look at all the clues that are L's and all the clues that are E's, there's a critical cell right here that you might miss, but it's pointed to by an L and by an E. And where one of those letters is going to be equal to 0, that means the cell is pointed to by a 0 for sure, and we can mark that in. And that actually now gives a pretty narrow test space to say if E is equal to 1, the cell and the cell are both shaded. And hopefully you can see how that's a deadly pattern. It's going to put a little loop corn in this corner, but it's not going to be able to be an extendable thing. And so E is, uh, after you mark this cell off as unusable, is pretty readily shown to be 0. L is able to then be shown as 1. If we mark in some other cells around the grid we know can never be shaded, you can't shade a cell near a corner actually put this into the grid as a start around this L. You can put a path in here uh, through this uh, zero clue and mark this into the grid. That now means everything else in the puzzle has to be a two, three, or four clue. So we have H, O, and A to look at, and H looks like the next most constraining because it just has the place where it's pointing at just these cells. So H has to be two or three. Um, putting in that maximum value of 3, you should see pretty quickly, again, we're going to have a situation like we had in this corner where we got a little bit of loop growing in, but now we've got this whole space that you can't get into and out of again, uh, and so you're going to constrain a bit of the loop up there. And so H, through a little bit of trial, can be shown uh, is a 2, and we'll mark those into the grid, and now get to the last letters, which are O and A. O looks like from pointing in this row where it can get one, two, three, four, has a maximum of four, so it's three or four. And A, where we've got this long clue and this long clue that look like they can be pretty large, these ones on the edges are actually fairly constraining. And that's because on an edge, you have to always have two cells between anything you shade. You can't have a situation like this because you'd close things off. And so I could put in you know, these four cells exactly to get A to be a four. Um, otherwise, 3 is valid, but we're not going to get larger than 4. And if I actually look across the grid, if I do try to pack this whole thing as a 4, I'm going to get something like this, where I, I can't use this cell, um, so I'm going to have to come through this area, um, and I can do this and this. So I think the only valid 4 is what I've just drawn in here. But notice that we now cause another issue in this lower right corner. We're going to have a bit of the loop uh, that can't connect in with another loop end coming out. and so. A could really stretch to try to be 4, but when we look in the, the grid, that's not, that's not itself possible. So um, A looks to be 3. O then is forced to be 4. Another uh, set of clues you could look at in the interaction is this A and this O. They point towards each other. So one of them is going to see three cells. I think we could actually know for sure at this stage of the puzzle that three cells are shaded in the middle. One side will be unused, and the other cell will get uh, one more in it. So you get 3 plus 4 across the group. Again, we said A was equal to 3, so there are these three cells, and this fourth is what the O sees, and the A will see the three cells in the middle. So let's mark in those uh, clue values, and now let's just come through Yagellon type solving and see how far we can get. The O being 4 means that we do have to shade exactly these 3 and then one of these. So we'll come back in a second and, and think about this option. Uh, this 3 on this bottom edge will take one of these cells. We can't shade this one, so it looks like this cornering is required. If I shade to the left or to the right, we're going to probably form some different constraints up top. and. It looks like another clue that actually interacts in the space is going to be this two to the right. So this two to the right clue can't shade here. Once we've got an X uh, marking one of these cells is shaded, it can't shade here. So this two only has two cells that can be shaded for it. Marking that in and marking the loop pieces around it forces a shading of this cell. And that's going to complete this loop section. Put in these shaded pieces. This comes up for this three clue to work. We've got to shade this topmost cell left in that column. 
we still have a case where we've got one more cell down here to shade, but notice it can't be this one because that's going to form a three-way branch for the cell. So the remaining cell to shade for this clue is one of these two. This one still needs a clue to be shaded, so it's one of these cells, but if it's this cell, we form a dead end, so it's exactly this cell. Put some more loop ends from that cornering in, so these are all just forced to keep connectivity. This is from loop cornering, this is even also from that. We have, uh, let's see, some other key observations. Uh, this two clue still needs to get some cells marked in. We're actually at a case where as we have this loop end growing, we actually also have some cells like this one that can't be shaded. Let's see if there's some other cells we can roll out from being shaded. In this case where I've got an option, if I don't use a cell, I've got to take these two. Notice that I'm now making a three-way junction here. And so one thing I'm seeing is that this cell has to be shaded in one of these remaining ones to get this to be valid. So let's put this in. This comes up to do required loop cornering. The cell must be shaded, so this comes in to do required cornering. One of these two cells is shaded. If it's this one, we make a dead end. So again, it's going to come here. This moves over, forces that cell to be shaded. These loop ends come in, and we've done a lot to finish the bottom of the grid. We're going to have one of these cells shaded from the one. We have to have one more of these cells shaded for this clue to be valid. So this comes in, this comes over. We have to get three to the left working out, so one of these is shaded. This is always shaded, so we'll put these in. On this side, if I shade the cell, I make a dead end, so I've got to shade the one to the left. I've got three loop ends coming into this two by two box. I need one more loop end coming out. This extends up. We've got two pointing to the top with exactly two cells left that could be shaded, so we'll mark those in. This has to get shaded. We now have one of these two cells left for the last two from the left. If it's this cell, we again make a dead end. So it's this one on the other side. That gives us cornering. We now got a lot of loop grown, but look at the right side of the grid. These ends are the same ends and would close off too soon. So these ends have to dodge. And then even over here, these ends have to dodge to get to one big loop. And so we finish the puzzle. So pretty tricky challenges throughout, a couple aha moments. The one I liked the most was really appreciating the power of the cell, which is seen by a zero and a one clue, even when you don't know which is zero or one which sets up a trap over here. There are then ways to level up the remaining letters, see that H can't be three, see that A can't be four, and, and through that get every clue placed to finish the Agilent grid. There may be some other logical steps uh, that others found, so feel free to add those in the comments if you had a different way you got through the puzzle, but otherwise hope you learned something through this video. Enjoyed this challenge from Carl, and we'll see you again soon.